This is a Whole Observatory podcast. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Star Stuff, um, the podcast where we talk about all things astronomy. And today we have two remarkable guests. Um, and it's a great conversation we're going to have, I think, because we're combining science and arts, um, which there are so many strong connections, and we're going to talk about that some today. So with me here today is Ulrika Arnold, who is a world-renowned artist, and we're going to talk about some of her unique art because it incorporates rocks and stones and other elements of, of Earth right inside her paintings. And then Dr. Gerard Van Bell, an eminent astronomer here at Lowell Observatory, um, who studies all sorts of things in space and has always has a really remarkable project hmm. that you're either working on or proposing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you find all the time to do it, um, but it's you don't need to sleep, right? Yeah, I don't need to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll get to it later. Well, it's great to have you two here. Yes. And um, so folks watching might wonder, why do we have an artist and an astronomer here? Um, and we're going to talk about that some, um, especially about your artwork and then how you worked with Gerard some to kind of conceptualize some of that stuff. So, um, Ulrike, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and where you came from mm -hmm. and why you're here today. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm from Dusseldorf in Germany. And uh, since about 30 years, I'm coming for and backward from Germany here to the southwest. I love it very much. I think it's a very impressive landscape. And then seeing the night sky is absolutely profound for me. And I studied in Düsseldorf and uh, wrote my examination work of the prehistoric art, the rock art, which is 17,000 years old, you know, in France, Lascaux. Mm. And that was later for me the inspiration to paint only with the earth. I studied again at the Kunstakademie in Düsseldorf to be just an artist and then I risk to get off my teaching job to say, I have to concentrate. What is my dream? I just want to paint. And since that time, I'm traveling all over the world to every continent. I had been now, even the Antarctica, to paint on site with the material itself. Yeah, and then today... Um, I'm here, uh, so happy to be here at the Lowell Observatory because always when I'm here in Flagstaff and I have a little cabin here when I come in the summer, I like to come here and see through the telescope and look into the sky because that is for me as an artist a very big inspiration and more I tell you later. And you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting you, you word, use the word inspiration because this very room we're sitting in was mm -hmm. built in 1910, and it was built to be Percival Lowell, our founder's library. And he did astronomy, but he often gazed out the windows here toward the painted desert because he saw a very Martian-like landscape. And so he thought about a lot about that connection um, between landscapes and art and science. And it's, it's ideal that we're doing this talk in this room, I think. Mm -hmm. you know, in many ways, when he would look at Mars, he was seeing perhaps a bit too much in his mind's eye the landscapes there and right. the things that he thought were going on there and that mm -hmm. you know was the the genesis of this observatory exactly mm -hmm. so gerard what do you do here today so uh in well, well you have to limit it you know we only have 30 minutes so you have in, to in general at lowell i do work on uh high resolution astronomy so i look at things that are uh I, I try to build telescopes that have the greatest amount of resolution you can look at out in the sky. And I do a lot of instrumentation work and then actually then use those instruments to look at things in the sky. I'm a little jealous, of course, with the work that you can do, Ulrika, because you actually get to work with your hands with your subject. And everything I work on is forever removed. And, uh, you know, so it's a bit of a, an, the antithesis of that uh, where you know, the near and the far, but, uh, you know, it all does come together with where the sky meets the earth, I would say. And it, and it really, you know, both the science and the art, it, it involves imagination and creativity yeah. and just different ways of looking at it mm -hmm. and studying it. Um, we have several of your pieces here. Yes. And so to give everybody an idea what you do, maybe Gerard, if you want to sure. hold that one up first. So this was something that 
Erika, you very generously gave to me and mm-hmm. is hanging proudly on my office wall. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a small piece. This is maybe the one thing that is a little misleading about it is a lot of your pieces are very large. Mm-hmm. And so this is definitely a smaller one. And maybe you could tell, uh, tell yeah. us a bit about it. So first of all, this is not only earth because I told you I paint with the earth and the rock and the sand or what we find on the ground. But in this case, it has material from the cosmos and it's an amazing story. So this year, I touch on it because I like to touch my painting. It's like three-dimensional. And, and, and you made it so you're allowed to touch it. Yeah, but <laughs> I allow sometimes people to touch it. Mm-hmm. I had even blind kids mm-hmm. in yes. the embassy in Santiago de Chile invited for a show. And uh, I said, please touch the painting. Mm-hmm. And that was very touching for me to see That was a big joy for them. Normally, they're not allowed to touch works. Mm -hmm. So all my work is three-dimensional. You see here, that blue is azurite, and that grayish, metallic-looking, that is meteorite dust. So in a way, this combines heaven and earth for me, the painting. So the meteorite dust I get presented by... um, meteorite scientist his name is marvin Marvin kilgore Kilgore. Mm -hmm. and uh, so he gives me every year since a special date since 2002 when i met him first so the name of the painting on the back is always the title where it was done so if i Mm -hmm. paint it in bisbee arizona the title is bisbee arizona and in it is just the earth and the rock or when i paint here in flagstaff And we have here another painting, uh, that one here. Okay. And we can describe it for people who are just audio. So Flagstaff is famous for the volcano. So I have a little cabin near the um, Miriam crater, um, east of Flagstaff. And you see here, that is all black lava, or you say cinder for it. And here we have the meteorite. It's very sharp, you know, and metal. And you can tell more uh, because people always ask me, wow, where get you from? And how old old is that? Because, Mm -hmm. I mean, people get goosebumps when they know, wow, this is meteorite dust. How old is that? And how can we imagine about that? So this form here of the painting is sort of round, that means for me is like also like a planet that mm-hmm. in art is nice to have intuition and imagination to create. And the wonderful thing here is now science and art, how they can inspire each other. The so other G- painting. Yeah. Gerard, as a scientist, what do you see when you look at this? To, to me, looking at this round painting with the colors that it, it looks very evocative of the moon to me, mm-hmm. you know, very, you know, the heavenly body with the lights and darks that we have here. And then the the fact that we have meteoritic dust incorporated into it, you know, meteoritic meteorites are the leftover relics yeah. of the formation of our solar system. So they're about four and a half billion years old. And they haven't been weathered other than their short journey to the ground. And so they do tend to be very sharp. Um, and yeah, Marvin Kilgore, the meteorite man that Rika works with, um, gets larger pieces and will section them. And then there's the leftover dust. And so that's how you've got come by the mm. dust. So yeah. it's not just cast aside. Yeah. And so this is, you know, I, I like how you, you know, talk about the heaven and the earth and how yeah. it's, it's comes together like that. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it, it reminds me, uh, there's a strong connection with Flagstaff and science in general, mm-hmm. but in going to the moon. That's right. All the Apollo astronauts who went to the moon trained here in Flagstaff. Exactly. And one of them, we were just talking about earlier off the air, Alan Bean. Um, Alan Bean was in Flagstaff as a speaker for our Festival of Science years ago. And he's unique about among all of them. Mm-hmm. Because while the other astronauts were racing cars or maybe chasing girls or whatever, he was taking art classes. Mm-hmm. And he was learning how to be an artist. Yeah. And after his career, after his astronaut career, he did painting full-time, depicting... Um, scenes on the moon this reminds me a lot because he incorporated like mission patches that he brought back Mm -hmm. that had elements of the moon 
he ground that up and, and sprinkled that in. And so just like yours, um, you know, you, you look at it, you feel like you're there because you know that's, that's part of the, mm. part of the um, painting itself. And yeah. you, you mentioned that you, you met him. Yeah, he was uh, years ago, I think it was in 2009. And I just love that about Flagstaff, that they have here this strong connection with the science and that the public can visit that talk. Mm -hmm. So I saw him talking and he had a slideshow, show his photos and so showed photos from the moon. And then what was most impressive, what he said, for him, it's the earth, which is the most beautiful and admirable. He was on the moon, but realizing then later seeing the earth, how beautiful is our earth. So I went to him, introduced myself and gave him a catalog of mine. And uh, we both laughed that it's interesting to be connected to science and the art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a, it, and that's something that I think more and more here at Lowell Observatory certainly is that connection with the science and the arts and the humanistic part of mm -hmm. of looking out in the universe. Yeah. It's it's both a scientific pursuit and a personal mm -hmm. journey as it were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we have another piece here. Yeah. That, yeah, that was, I had always a good connection to the USGS and I met there one scientist, her name is uh, Mary Chapman mm -hmm. and she told me when she saw my connection with the meteorite, she said, Ulrike, you know what? Close by is an area in the Painted Desert. There is some dirt which is like on Mars. Mm -hmm. And she was doing a scientific work about that. And she told me about the blueberries, which is typical. So we mm -hmm. went one day and night and spent in the time in, in the tent to feel about the land. And then we picked up the blueberries. You see, these mm -hmm. look like blueberries and the colors, she said, that is how they imagine it will be on Mars. So I created then later um, adequate Earth to uh, Mars. And the interesting thing is, yeah, so this is our only color from Painted Desert. It's written on the back. And through a friend, Helen Running, uh, she worked in the night... Um, computer room, she showed me also satellite view from Mars and mm -hmm. the moon. And that inspired me a lot. I said, oh my God, this is so beautiful to see just the satellite photos. And if you see my painting here, in a way, it looks like from high above. But also you can see if you go close, it's like looking through a microscope. And through Helen, I came into a conference which was in 2002 when the other famous astronaut was here in Flagstaff. So they had a celebration for him, for uh, Harrison Schmidt mm -hmm. uh, was his name. And I heard that they all are also had the ability to be a geologist because they had to train to pick up the rocks. And so they trained here nearby in the meteor crater. I was fascinated. And so Helen uh, and took me to this conference. So I thought I have to shake hands with an astronaut. Mm -hmm. This is so amazing. And in the moment I saw him and gave hand with him, he realized immediately that I'm not a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I said, you know what? I'm painting only with the Earth, but wouldn't it be possible to work in a way with the cosmos? When is the next shuttle going into space? So we both laughed. It was a crazy question. But in fact, 10 years later, it's now possible, but you need a lot of dollars. <laughs> yes. uh, so, uh, well, the next day was a field trip into Meteor Crater in the Beringer Crater. Normally, it's not allowed to go in, but with all the scientists, we went down in the crater where the, they trained in their special clothes and picking up rocks uh, to train. And there I met this Marvin, and he thought I'm a scientist related to Mars. I laughed so much. I said, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I'm an artist and explained what I'm doing. And then he said... I'm doing the same. I go also all over the world to continents and look for meteorites with a special detector. And then he has to cut a slice for the NASA. Mm -hmm. 
And the leftover, he said, I cannot throw this is away. This is so precious. And um, I didn't know what to do with it. But now, as I see you and you tell me what you're doing, do you want to have that? Can you believe how lucky I was? And since that time, I paint with the meteorites. And um, yeah, so that is a connection also mm -hmm. to Gérard, because a filmmaker wanted to do mm -hmm. a movie about me. And then, of course, we said, we have to integrate the science. And here is a great person, uh, Gérard. He can tell the connection to astronomy and talk about the stars and especially the meteorite. Uh -huh. so, so let's, let's talk about that dialogue Earth yeah. you're talking about. So how did that come about? And, and tell us a little bit about what's, what's encapsulated in there. Yeah. So um, the filmmaker I actually met 25 years mm -hmm. ago in the aeroplane and we were talking nonstop eight hours, mm -hmm. everybody about his life. And then a few years later, let's say 10 years later, he said, Ulrike, I want uh, to meet you. I have a new film. Um, he was City of God. He was co-producer. This is a quite famous film, Oscar nominated. And he said, I have a new movie. Uh, come to the Berlin Film Festival. And when I met him, he said, Ulrike, your life is so interesting. I want to do a movie about you. And I couldn't believe it. So that finally happened. Uh, the movie was done uh, about five years ago. And three years ago was a premiere in Germany. But he has a concept. He wants to come to Flagstaff to me here where it all happened and then go also to Utah. So in the movie happen all these things and, of course, meeting the scientist, mm -hmm. meeting uh, Gérard yep. at Discovery uh, Channel Telescope. And that is so amazing uh, to have this scenes in and also Marvin. We um, is filmed at the Meteor Crater. So a lot is happening in Flagstaff, but then also we went to Utah. Mm -hmm. And the film is now... Um, was shown here, That's Gérard right. had the mm -hmm. idea, thank you so much, yeah. uh, to show here in the auditorium. And that was thrilling. And the people had a lot of question and liked it. And the music for the film was done specially for this movie, which is called Dialogue Earth by Hank Levine. And the music is from... Um, the composer Volker Bertelmann, also from my town, Düsseldorf. Mm -hmm. And he just got the Oscar for music. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. Well, I know in Dialogue Earth, I, the music, it just really sets the atmosphere yeah. for it. It's really, mm -hmm. And I noticed there's a kind of a cameo shot of Gerard is in there for, mm -hmm. I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Yep. Yes. Out of the, uh, now it's called the Lowell Discovery Telescope. But then Dennis Hopper is in there. Yeah. What's the right. connection with Dennis yeah. Hopper? Yeah, I met him. I met him once. Uh, it was 91 in um, Taos, New Mexico, through an artist friend. And he also was a painter and a photographer. Mm -hmm. And then when he found out, we met on the street in Taos, and he knows my friend Ron Cooper, and he said, oh, Ulrike, can you come to my studio? I want to have a critique for my paintings. I did the next day, which was Christmas Day. And um, I was wondering how he wanted to hear a critique from me. Mm -hmm. So then after three hours, he said, mm -hmm, interesting, interesting. <laughs> but what are you painting? Do you have something with you? I said, oh, let's see. In my pickup truck, I have something. <laughs> I unrolled it. It was a painting I have done in Bisbee at the border to Mexico. And it was a painting I have done in the full moon and the other side on the day. So when I unrolled it, he was so thrilled. He said, uh, I have to have that piece. He said, uh, this was so fantastic in that moment. And he bought it. And about... Mm -hmm. 20 years later, when I heard he died, uh, all the artwork was given to Christie's mm -hmm. New York. Production. And at that moment, I said, I have to get that painting back. I had it only three weeks. <laughs> I 
you know, paintings are also like children. Yes. And it was not so easy to give it away, but as he wanted it so much, it was more easy. So I auctioned it back. So it's hanging back in my studio in Düsseldorf. <laughs> how, many time, how many times do you have to buy your own painting back? Yeah, but that, that, was, yeah, yeah, that was uh, just this case because yeah. it was such a special... I painted in the full moon. Mm -hmm. In the full moon is mm -hmm. so bright and it's such a special atmosphere. That show against my mm -hmm. connection, heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But I think it was so interesting, uh, Gérard talking in the movies so for a lot of people who are just in the art film, who look uh, to art, who look to the movie, then they get now in a very perfect way how he talks about science. That is so nice because it's not so complicated that you don't understand it. He make it understandable also for people who have no idea about these astronomical things. Well, you really made a great connection because anybody who's been to Loeb's Observatory for a public program where Gerard has participated ha. or gone to a science presentation yeah. or spoken to him, um, he's just so articulate with, with explaining things. And it's not dumbing it down. It's making it appropriate for the audience mm. and making it exciting. And, and, you know, I do our public relations here and it's always great if we have media calling. It doesn't matter what the topic is. Gerard will say, I can talk. Just give me a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And, and, and his, his eyes really great. You've met the right person here yeah. um, to, to really nurture that excitement yeah. about it all. Yeah, yeah. and I met him through a uh, German. Um, he's a director at the Paranal Observatory That's in, right, down uh, in, in Chile. Atacama Desert in yep. Chile, uh, where I travel a lot and paint a lot. And I met uh, Andreas there in 2009, or no, 2011. And then he came one day to visit here, Lowell Observatory. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, Ulrika, you have to meet mm -hmm. this Gerard. <laughs> He's a great guy. So he connected us together. And I think you had a exhibition at the time at the Museum yeah, of Northern Arizona. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And we had Andreas Kaufer here for the visiting committee for Lowell at the time. Right, yeah. And so that's how we met. And yeah, yeah. So that is a connection. So you see, always I'm connected yes. to science and art, like the geology, or when I paint in Utah, it's the area where they find a lot of dinosaur. Mm -hmm. And there I got from the last digging, I get some mud from that uh, digging. So that is uh, interesting, always this combination. But for people who first time see an artwork, important is to go with their feeling, with the colors, and think this is like the view out of the eagle's eye, you would say, mm. or from a satellite, or looking through a microscope. It's and, abstract. And that's one of the very interesting things about the film that I found, was how there were shots in the film that were close-ups of your paintings, and yeah. then there were shots in the film that were drones, yeah. going overhead while you were doing your work out yeah. in the desert yeah. and that kind of thing. And it was hard to tell which was which because yeah. Yeah. they looked very similar. Yeah, and that was uh, the drone footage was done by Victor van Koren. He's my partner. And he also traveled with me um, to Atacama. He's also a photographer and he did a lot of close-up shootings. Mm -hmm. So when I'm painting, then when you see how is the colors, the dirt running and all that. So he made uh, close-up. So then you really don't know what is what. Mm -hmm. So that is the nice thing. It's a visual experience for mm -hmm. everybody, not only for the people who are art sophisticated. It's a film. And that was the goal of the filmmaker, Hank Levine, to do something where everybody can be inspired. And very special in this day, of course, is the environmental issue, the nature which is endangered, the, our earth. And so in this case, we all have to be more aware mm -hmm. what's going on with the earth. And for that reason, that film is also here. So to see that and dialogue earth how do how can people watch it 
Ja, in, in, in Europe it's on Netflix, but you know what is so nice here? We showed the film here now in Lowell mm -hmm. Observatory, but uh, it looks like they're very interested to show the film more often. That's right. We're having mm -hmm. discussions about mm -hmm. repeat screenings here. So, and I thought that it's in the movie, I'm speaking sometimes German, sometimes English. Mm -hmm. So for people who uh, study here in Flagstaff German, would be yes. an interesting <laughs> thing to come. But uh, then uh, the whole film has subtitles in six different languages. You can also choose, if you are from Portugal, to yeah. have with the Portuguese um, subtitles. And then in a year, when our new Astronomy Discovery Center is open with our screen in the universe theater that is mm -hmm. two stories high and 100 feet wide we'll have to have another viewing yes that'll be, yes. Special. That'll be impressive i yeah. i would love that and then here in your um, collection in the museum where you can go yes there is also some artwork mm -hmm. which i gave here for you yes yeah. right well and, mm -hmm. and lowell appreciates that and to mm -hmm. be able to share that with all our visitors yes. we're excited about that mm -hmm. now i notice in in watching the film um, there's a lot of scenes of you all over the world yeah. in the in the field. It's 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 like a travel log. Um, yeah, yeah. How much of your work is in the field versus going back inside, you know, mm -hmm. your laboratory or wherever and doing internal touch-ups? Yeah. So let's say half of the year I'm traveling mm -hmm. and um, half of the year I'm in Düsseldorf. But in Düsseldorf, also when I'm there. Then I get an invitation or I suddenly I have a feeling I have to go now to Morocco and uh, create something there. It depends. I sometimes don't know what happens tomorrow, <laughs> but generally you can say in the summer I'm coming here. August, September, October, and you know, I love it now when there is a monsoon mm -hmm. and I let even the rain run over my painting being here in the elements here in Flagstaff it's so profound for me seeing the night sky having then these volcano fields where I uh, stay and seeing the clouds and all what's going on here you can still feel the power of the earth but if you are in a big city like mm -hmm. Düsseldorf Berlin or so mm -hmm. it's not so easy to feel here you're really connected. I can say to the students here at the university, they are lucky to be in such a place where so much important nature around it. Yeah. So do you do you ever get antsy? Like, if you're in one place too long, do you just like I have to get up and go? No, I have no, to go no, travel. No, 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 not at all, not at all. No. I, I the, also a day I can work like crazy. I get energized when I am on a magical place and the mm -hmm. places I look for they are very special places. You could, some people say it's like a holy magical place. Then I feel energized. I don't need to stop. I could work and work and work. Mm -hmm. But then as an artist, it's not only the work to create. You also have to do other things, organize and organize a trip, a travel. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have also uh, to sell some work. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm lucky that I was invited by a resort, which is in Utah, like two and a half hours mm -hmm. from here. It's a Amangiri resort. Um, and they asked to create the huge, huge painting for the lobby and for the rooms. So they say, please come back more. These belong to them, but then guests come and say, oh, something like that I would also like to mm -hmm. have for me. And so for that reason, I also go now for some time to Utah to create create there at a cave where is also some old rock art so, so mm -hmm. i was wondering gerard if i don't think you've been in the field except for little discovery telescope mm -hmm. um so far but do you guys have plans to do take your show on the road as it were and you know maybe go to some of the other sites um so we have your we had your friends visiting for the screening last uh, weekend from yeah. one of, from one of the places in Utah. That's that right? Yeah, that is and, close by near Big Water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is famous for finding dinosaurs. That's right. We had yeah. a whole story about finding dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Over and and she on Friday. <laughs> she was a guide there at Amangiri, and her name is Angie, and she found 
a dinosaur baby um, by looking for shark teeth. And then she suddenly found vertebrae, and that was so amazing. And mm. the paleontologist digged it up. It was, I think, two meter. Uh, plesiosaur, something like that. And it looks like it's one of the oldest species they ever found. Mm -hmm. And I hope that it's so special that they name it after her, Angie Saur or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so uh, Gerard will come to that area and we look uh, to the site mm -hmm. uh, where they find it, uh, found it and also where I was painting. Yeah, one of the things that's nice about the Southwest are these dark skies. And so you have these sites where you can see these things that you can find in the earth, but then you also have the sky above you too. Mm. And so I think it'd be, you know, again, a good intersection of the things that you can see above and below. Yeah, that is mm -hmm. exactly the name, above and below, heaven and earth. And so that is the inspiration and putting up a tent there in this area, uh, the Smoky Mountain on this, uh, this area, actually, you know how they call it, the moon. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And in this mm -hmm. area uh, near Big Water, um, they did the film The Martians. So okay. here we have yeah. all the connections, right. oh, yeah. Mars, Perfect. moon, and it's really very dark there. There is no much city light, so it's yeah. spectacular. And mm -hmm. I one time remember to have seen uh, the ple 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 Pleiades, the, when it, the mm -hmm. falling stars. It was oh, amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, the Perseids. The Perseids. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I. Uh, well, my English is not so. Oh no, you we got you're great. Oh, better than our German. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know Gerard. Uh, uh, was in Germany also yeah. working at the... No ambition, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he speaks and understands some German. Well, I'm yeah. going to look forward to seeing you guys do more of these programs together. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to nag you about it because sure. it's just really great that, again, that combination of, of the art and science and different ways of looking at the universe around us. And um, we could talk all day, but we're out of time. Yes. These things go so fast. Mm -hmm. Ulrike and Gerard, thanks for joining us today. And thank everybody for joining uh, Star Stuff. And we'll see you next time. This podcast was made possible by our members and donors. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support our nonprofit in making more digital education like this available, go to lowell.edu slash donate. Thanks for listening.